Okay, so we start with Canelo Alvarez, who has some strong choice words for his younger stablemate, Ryan Garcia. Canelo told Complex, look, Ryan has a lot of talent, but in my eyes, he's wasting a lot of time and wasting his talent. I look at him and don't see him 100% dedicated, and to us, that's a bad signal. We always remind him to come to the gym, to train and learn. You're learning day by day, very minimum, fighting five times a year. When I was beginning, I did 15 fights in one year. Definitely he needs to be a little more dedicated. Wow, okay, Ah, you said that you don't see that this is a big deal, but think about it. What if you're, what if I went publicly and said, you know what, I, I don't really think Ah gives 100% on the show. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, maybe it is true. Let's say it is true, because let's say what Canelo is saying about him, is, obviously it has to have some truth to it. You know, well, if he's saying that we always, how would you feel if, you know, I'm saying, yo, you, that's, wouldn't you feel like that's something I, 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 I yeah, should say yeah, to you in private? Yeah, yeah, but you and I know each other for damn near 30 years. They just started being around each other for the last couple of years. So maybe the relationship isn't as close as we assume. They're stable mates, bro. No, what I'm so saying a is, difference. I'm, so, what I'm saying, how does that... How yeah, does that affect it, you? Is that a good thing that he's saying? Or is that something be. that could possibly bother it can, him? It can be. It depends on what type of person you are. You can take it as motivation, in my opinion. Like, damn, maybe I am slacking. Maybe Canelo's the type of guy that he is very honest. And he was asked a question. And at that particular moment, he didn't know how to divert. He just had to spill his, you know, his truth to whoever was asking him the question. And maybe he regrets it. Maybe he wish he didn't say it. Or maybe he meant to say it so Ryan can hear it and shape up if it is indeed it's it's true. I'm, we, we don't know if that's true, but there has to be some truth to it if Canelo actually said it in public like you mentioned. But Barack, I just think it depends on how Ryan takes it. He can take it as motivation. Maybe he can take offense to it and tell Canelo on the side, hey, Canelo, you my man, you could have pulled me to the side and said it in private. Who knows, Barack? I just think that Let's turn it into something positive. Maybe it motivates uh, Ryan Garcia. See, at first I thought, well, maybe because when I just read the headline, I was like, well, maybe he doesn't realize that, you know, he, he suffered from mental um, illness and, you know, there was a problem. He took a little break, you know, for his mental health. And, but then when he's saying that we always have to tell him to come to the gym, I'm like, oh, now obviously there is an underlying problem that they've been dealing with. And maybe Canelo is just like that big brother, that mentor type to say that. It's just strange to me for him to say that publicly, especially when that's your trainer's guy. You understand? No matter what, your trainer has a relationship with him. And I don't know. I want to know how Eddie Reynoso feels about um, them putting that out there publicly. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they had a conversation afterwards, and I'm pretty sure it's all hashed out. Canelo might have called Ryan. Ryan might have called Canelo. It was just a statement. You know, it's tough when you always have a microphone in your face, cameras in your face, and you ask questions. Sometimes things slip out. I mean, I've said some things in the public that I regret. Even so, you? What? <laughs> yeah, even you me, always surprisingly <laughs> enough. So, no, but on a serious note, Barack, I, I don't want to give this too much fuel. I don't want to light this fire like Canelo, Cross, Ryan. I don't think it's that serious. I think it was a statement, and maybe there was some truth to it. Maybe Ryan needed it. Who knows? It's done. It spilled milk. I don't think it's going to ruin their relationship. Yeah, and this is the thing. What, what it boils down to is what is their relationship like? If their relationship is based on friendship, true friendship, and then they really do love each other, then this is gonna be something like, you're right, you're right, big bro. Let me let me get back in there. Maybe I really didn't want people to know that, but you, <laughs> you know, but you're right. You know what I mean? I needed to hear that. Let me tighten up. In more Canelo news, in the same interview with Complex, the pound for pound king says that he's looking to fight four times next year. Now, Barack. I mean, are there that many opponents for Canelo Alvarez for him to fight four times next year? And Canelo has gone on to say that he wants to fight till he's about, I don't know, 35, 36, 37. So is he going to fight in every division? What four opponents do you see Canelo possibly fighting, Barack? Well, before I say any opponents, I'm going to say that at least this is one boxer that when he says that, we can believe it, you know, because mm -hmm. in reality, if you think about it, he fought Kovalev in what? What did he, what was that, 2019 or 2020? Yeah, 2019, like November or something like that, and 
he's been fighting literally 10 weeks out. Uh, he, he fought Callum Smith, and then 10 weeks again, he fought Yildrim, and then on his holiday, you know, he fought Billy Joe Saunders, so he literally is fighting four times within a year, you know, so I, I do believe him when he says it. Now, of course there's a lot of fights, there's no shortage of fights. There's guys who need fights at 160, maybe they can meet him at 168, and we know that, and that's Jamal Charlo and, and Demetrius Andre, but if we don't want to go there, because they're 160, I understand, you still got Benavidez, maybe by then, He's saying, I'll fight Benavidez. No title, but it's just a name that the public is throwing out there. And the one that I want to see him fight, if he doesn't fight Jamal or Andre, is better BF at 175. I, I used to say he's not a 175. -er. I still think he's not a 175. -er. But he's been open, he's been open to say that, yeah, I'll fight B Ball. Like they was trying to make the B Ball fight. So if that's the case, fight better BF. Listen, bro. I mean, I, I'm with you. I was with you. I, I, we both know how small Canelo really is. He probably can make 154 if he wanted to, right? So those guys are really big. But the more I watch Canelo fight, Barack, the, 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 the more uh, I think of him as a fighter, you know, and, and the better he's getting. So I, I'm not afraid of him fighting Bivol or Beterbiev anymore. So, yeah, those are potential opponents if he decides to move back up to 168. Nevertheless, I hope we do see Canelo Alvarez fight four times in 2022. That's a good thing for boxing. Absolutely. And that's, you mean, I know you meant to say 175, but listen, let's just say if he can get past Plant, that's that's a tall order right there. Just like Plant said. Yes, he, let's he, not look a, past him. I know he's a great fighter, but since this is what this segment is about, it's about his next four fights. <laughs> I say Baturviev, if you beat Baturviev, I'm going to put that in the category of Roy Jones winning a heavyweight championship. Seriously, mm. 20 pounds above where you fight. That's that's 20 pounds above where Canelo was used to fighting at, which is 154, 155, the Canelo weight back in the days. You know, that's a huge, huge victory. We got to remember to give people credit for moving up in weight. Of course. And, well, let, and, let him get and, past Plant, like you said, first. No, but we're talking know, about his four, four <laughs> fights. Now, listen. And, and if, if he, he can if do he that. If he beats of Barack, we're going to have a whole different type of conversation about Canelo Alvarez's legacy and, 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 and on a top, top, all-time list. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, <laughs> he's already kind of working his way there if he continues to win, you know. But I also think that if, let's just say he does go up to 175 and fights anybody, Bivol or Beterbiev, I think he'll be making a case for anybody at 160 should probably meet him at 168. No question. I think that would be a little bit fair, but I would love to see Andre in there with him or Jamal Charlo. Moving on to the MMA world, on Wednesday night, Clarissa Shields, friend to the room, was outpointed by Abigail Montes via split decision. After the fight, Shields said the loss wouldn't detour the game plan, one that calls for her to continue her boxing career while simultaneously prepares to enter the PFL Championship season in 2023. Now, Barack, should she continue her MMA journey or should she, uh, you know, 100% stick with the sport of boxing? <laughs> no, uh, I mean, no to the latter. Like I say, continue. Why? This hasn't affected anything. She's still blowing everybody out in the boxing world, and she didn't get destroyed. It was a split decision. Okay, let's say you feel like it wasn't a split decision. It should have been unanimous decision because people are saying that. So what? She won one round. She didn't get beat up, even though she she mounted her. She mounted Cl Clarissa. She was barely hitting her. I don't even know if she hit her. You know, she did. I, I think well, Montez's face looked worse than Clarissa's. Like, Clarissa looked like she really wasn't touched. So, she's learning. She actually did better than she did in the first fight. She's learning. You seen her, how calm she was? And in dangerous moments, she was calm. And she had the, the nerve to look at her, her corner and be like, okay, got you. <laughs> and then no, do whatever it's they said. It's, it's obvious I know nothing about MMA, Barack, because I thought she won the fight. So I know if I say that in public, I'll get right. hammered. But honestly, Barack, I'm looking for different things. I don't know what you and Bob, Bobby T knows about grappling and mountain and all that stuff. All I know is who's hitting who in the face, right? So a lot of hugging going on by the gate in one of those rounds. But there was a, uh, there was a moment in that fight, honestly, where Clarissa had her back on the canvas and yeah. she was swinging. 
I, I, I rarely ever see a fighter yes. swinging yes. from the floor. Usually they're blocking and trying to protect themselves. Right. Clarissa landed shots on Abigail while she was on the floor. I don't think Abigail, to your point, landed many punches throughout that fight. So when I look at that fight overall, I don't see what's the unanimous part about it. You know why? Because Clarissa didn't retreat. Even though she was in a position where usually people give up or they retreat, she didn't retreat. She's a fighter, she's a warrior. And, and, and no matter what, I believe she's shown growth. She showed growth and it was, I thought it was a good fight. Understand if you judge it according to boxing rules, who landed the flush shots, that's Clarissa. But you gotta understand, they count takedowns. And that, I'm gonna tell you like this, it probably could have went in her favor if it wasn't for that last takedown and her to throw a barrage of punches. But at the end of the day, I think Clarissa Shields is where she's at, her second fight. Literally two years ago, me and you went out to eat with her at, at that vegan spot in Vegas and she didn't even know how to throw a chamber. Like I was trying to show her, I'm slap boxing with her and showing her how to throw a kick. She couldn't throw a kick two years ago. Like seriously, she's new to the game and still is one and one. I think she should continue this craft because so, in that particular world, she gets paid what she feels like she's worth and continue to do boxing as well.